Today's readings are all about the end times. Of course, the end of the calendar year isn't too far away, and the liturgical year has just about two weeks left until Advent begins. So now our scripture readings return to the end times and the last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Our Lord's teaching on the end times in today's gospel passage takes place during the week of his last, his last week of his life, Holy Week. He had entered Jerusalem for the last time on Palm Sunday. He went to the temple and taught there for the last time. And after a busy day of teaching, contending with those Pharisees and Sadducees in the temple, Jesus and his apostles went to rest on the Mount of Olives. It's fitting how, as his own earthly mission is drawing to a close, the Lord speaks about the end times. And just as we heard, the Lord uses biblical imagery to describe cosmic upheavals. The sun and moon will be darkened, the stars will fall, and the heavenly powers will be shaken. In the prophets, as we heard in the first reading, these heavenly disturbances symbolize earth-shattering impact of God's judgment upon a rebellious city or an empire. But what do they signify here in the gospel? On one level, Jesus is giving a symbolic portrayal of the fall of Jerusalem and the temple. For the Jews, the temple was a microcosm of the universe. Images of the stars and constellations were embroidered on the temple veils. The seven lights of the menorah represented the sun, the moon, and the five known planets. The temple was the center of the universe for them, the meeting point of heaven and earth. Thus, its destruction would be catastrophic of cosmic proportions. In this sense, Jesus' words were fulfilled in 70 AD when the temple was destroyed and burned to charred rubble, permanently ending the old covenant sacrifices, which are now completely useless. As St. Paul tells us, the priests of old offered daily sacrifices, which could never take away sins, but Christ offered one sacrifice for all sins. Jesus' words were also fulfilled in part at his crucifixion, when the sun was darkened at midday. The temple, of course, prefigures the mystery of Jesus himself, the new and definitive dwelling place of God among his people. Now, Jesus' bodily death foreshadows the destruction of the earthly temple, bringing in a new and final age of salvation history. So the Lord draws on the apocalyptic language of the prophets of old to reaffirm that these cosmic events will precede the end of the age, but the age ends so that it might give way to a new one that will last forever. For he adds, when you see these things happening, know that the Son of Man is near at the gates. Here, the Lord describes a truth that we proclaim in our creed every week regarding his return, the second coming. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. There will be great tribulations before the Lord's return, the Catechism says, before Christ's second coming, the church must pass through a final trial that will shake the faith of many believers. But we shouldn't be surprised. The Lord gives this teaching so we don't lose faith when the rafters of heaven shake. So what can we do? We must live as if the Lord's return is imminent. We must keep the faith even when there are wars and earthquakes and plagues, and we must remain vigilant against the temptations of the evil one and reject the false teaching of those who reject Christ. So be watchful, Jesus says. You do not know the day or the hour. Be prepared. It can come when we least expect it. Now, we don't know if Christ will return in our lifetime, and we never know how many more days we will live, but one thing is for sure, we all will have to be judged by him at the end of our life. So be vigilant at all times. We must be prepared for the Lord by living lives of righteousness as best we can, by repenting of our sins and confessing them often whenever we fail, 
and finally, by adoring, worshiping, and receiving the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Eucharist.